All right, thank you, Regina. Appreciate the introduction. Audience, welcome back to another Marketing Experiments Web Clinic. Uh, today we have an interesting topic. We're going to be looking at the sequence of a subject line. We have two really interesting experiments to walk us through today here at Marketing Experiments. And what we do here at Marketing Experiments is we run experiments and tests to cut through the clutter, the noise of speculation, of opinion, and actually discover what works. And so we have two interesting tests to reveal with you today what works as it regards to subject lines. And we're going to look at the right words and the sequence of those words. Before we get into it today, just want to do one little housekeeping note. Uh, if you would like to inter, uh, interact with us today, there's two ways you can do it. The first way is through GoToWebinar. There's a question and answer feature provided by GoToWebinar. If you have been on these clinics uh, before, you know how to use that. If not, I would encourage you to just go ahead and try to use that. Uh, we're going to be dialoguing back and forth. I'm going to be asking you questions and I need you guys quick uh, on your responses. So go ahead and get familiar with that tool if you have not already. Also, when we make reference to certain uh, tools, certain links, certain uh, bits of research, uh, we will be seeding that through or sharing that with you through hashtag webclinic on Twitter. You can also submit questions there if you would like as well. I've got both uh, the GoToWebinar feature as well as the hashtag webclinic in front of me. We're reviewing that, so feel free to interact with us through either one of those channels. All right, today, uh, my name is Austin McCraw. Again, um, it's good to have you back on this uh, clinic, um, and I'm joined with two special guests today. I've got Ben Huppertz. He is the Senior Manager of Research and Strategy here at Mech Labs. Mech Labs powers the research of marketing experiments. The tests that we are doing today with you have come through Mech Labs, and marketing experiments is one of the publishing arms of Mech Labs as we distribute this research to you. Ben has overseen many, many subject line tests as well as many other types of experiments. He's going to be bringing his expertise uh, to you today. I'm also joined by kind of a new guest. Uh, Ken Bowen. Uh, this is his first time on the clinic, so you'll have to uh, you'll have to give him a hard time. Uh, but Ken has done some of the research in putting together the the really the the slides and the writing and the uh, the research behind what we're going to be talking today. So I'll have him up here walking us through some of that research a little bit later. So again, uh, welcome. Use the question and answer feature, uh, hashtag web clinic, and we're going to dive right into an experiment, just like we do on all of our clinics, what we've been doing for the past decade. We dive right into an experiment, and to do that, I want Ben to go ahead and come up and walk us through this experiment around subject lines. Ben? Yeah, thank you, Austin. So <clears throat> this uh, experiment that we ran was on subject lines. Uh, it was for a regional marketing commission, and I just want to mention that we're going to mention Boston in these examples. The the marketing commission was actually not in Boston, but yeah. So this in is a different city. This is an experiment around. Uh, it's a city. We're working with a city That's to try right. to attract more people to so, come. Absolutely. So the goal was to bring in tourists and travelers um, by by raising awareness for local activities, events, um, and uh, let's let's jump right into an example. So. This was the control subject line. Um, are you a fall foodie? See what's going on in Boston this November. Um, so that was a control. Uh, our team looked at this and, and thought, well, we're talking to foodies. Well, let's give them food. So we put clam chowder, lobster rolls, and more, calling all foodies for Boston for Boston's best fall fun. Um, so, so we have those two subject lines right here. Should we have them vote? Yeah, so go ahead, uh, go to the, the next slide, Ben, where you have the two side by side. And audience, I want you to look at these two subject lines, all right? The first one here, uh, creative subject line, are you fall foodie, see what's going on in Boston, versus the treatment here, clam chowder, okay? And so you heard a little bit of the, 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 the logic behind that experiment. And just know that we run experiments every day that the treatment does not win, the control can win. Both are viable options at this point. So let me ask you this, which of these do you think will generate the greatest response? If you say, so a lot of you are saying treatment. Let me ask you this, why? Why do you think the treatment will outperform the control? Good, good. Okay, yeah, we'll so we've got, we've got some controls, some couple brave people there. So Ben, go ahead and show us the results. Which one won? All right, here we go. So in this case, it actually was the treatment. Uh, we saw a 10% increase in opens, um, which uh, if you're sending out a lot of emails, that's, that, that can make quite a difference. So saw 10% uh, in, in, in opens, but not only that, we actually saw a 15% relative increase in click-through rate. Uh, reasons for that might be because the content in the actual email may have yeah. spoken to the food, and so we're creating continuity between the subject yep. line 
and the body of the And you know what's interesting, Ben, is I know you've seen this, I've seen this, a lot of subject line tests where nothing else changes, just the subject line can and will at times impact the actual click-through rate. It could even impact the, the conversion rate on the landing page. Yes. So I think right now we're having maybe some mic troubles with Ben. Okay, so we're just moving his mic. For those of you who are making the comment that it's having a hard time hearing, uh, we are moving that microphone right now. I'm in a studio with Ben. Ben and I are, uh, we've got a bunch of lights in our face. We've got our stage manager coming around, fixing up microphones. So hopefully that, let us know. Let us know if that makes it better. Uh, but uh, so the point though is the treatment outperformed the control, not only in open rate. But also in click-through rate. But in exactly. click-through rate, yeah. perfect. Let's show them the other test. Right, so we didn't just stop there. We actually ran another experiment. So, so there are a couple reasons that, uh, that the treatment may have outperformed, right? We used some specificity, so we called it specific foods. But we also made it more appetizing, right? Mm -hmm. And so that may have generated some, in some interest there. Well, we thought they sent out emails, and so what about an incentive? So this one uh, was a subject line where uh, it says, book now to save up to 30% on hotel stays in December in Boston. That's a pretty significant saving and a, a pretty good subject line, um, but we wanted to kind of follow the example um, and see uh, what kind of difference we can have here. So almost the same approach, but holiday shopping, historic tours, pops, orchestra, concerts, and more Boston tradition. So mm -hmm. getting the people excited about what they're going to yes. see in the yes. city and really what the activities are. Um, and uh, let's see what the audience has to say to this one. We have them both side by yeah, side. Yeah, right and, and while the audience is looking at these two, it's interesting to note that we kind of imported the approach from the first test exactly. into this one. So honest, what we want to know is, which one do you think? Do you think the control will win or do you think the treatment will win again? So go ahead and look at these two, which is interesting. We now have the majority <laughs> of the audience saying control, okay? So uh, uh, control, control. I see uh, Maggie says control, Dale says control. Uh, Halesa says control, David says control, Andy control, lots of controls. A couple treatments in there. Kathy, I see a treatment there. Uh, but yeah, this is almost the opposite swing from the other one in which everyone voted Absolutely. for treatment. So, so Ben, walk us, through, walk us through the results. Absolutely. And again, understandable. So we have a 30% discount against uh, some specificity and, and what's going on in the city. But again, we saw a 9% increase in opens for the treatment, uh, which, uh, which again was a great result. Um, we actually, in this wow. particular example, saw a 26% of output increase and, in click-through rate. And nothing else changed but the subject line. Nothing else changed. Now, again, I, I just want to point out, the body of the email was talking about those things. So not only did we get people excited, mm -hmm. but there was continuity. So once we, we captured their interest, it continued through the body of the email. Excellent, excellent, Ben. Well, thank you so much, man. Thanks Absolutely. for walking us through these tests. Fascinating experiments. We'll have Ben back up here in a little bit when we uh, hopefully have time to get to uh, live optimization. We're actually looking at real world campaigns, applying what we learned from these tests to our own experiments. Okay, so uh, again, <laughs> I, what I find really fascinating about subject line tests, I really do, uh, is when sometimes this, the open rate increases but also the click-through rate increases itself. But beyond just the results, okay, and if you have been on these clinics, you know exactly where we're going, all right? Beyond just the numeric results, behind this test there is some sort of insight, some sort of customer learning that must be had. And the question that we always ask is not just which test won, but we asked why. Why did this treatment, why did this subject line outperform the other? Okay, so we're going to do that. We're going to make some observations about that subject line. And we're talking about emails today. I just want to pause and stop because oftentimes when I'm talking about subject lines, uh, I was we were just at one of the actually is actually our sister company's event, Marketing Tripa, uh, the largest email summit of its kind, gathering all email marketers, and we were talking about email. And one of the the anxieties, one of the concerns around email uh, that we often get is. Does it matter? Does email still matter? In this world of social media, in this world of uh, mobile devices, does email matter anymore? And so what we wanted to do for you audience is actually collect some research, our own research as well as research outside of the lab to answer that question. And so we have Ken Bowen. Uh, come on up, Ken. And uh, you know, Ken, <clears throat> welcome to uh, Marketing Experience Web Clinic. Thanks, Austin. Glad you could be, be here. here. Thanks for the research. I want you to walk the audience through some of the research you discovered as it relates to email. Is it important? Is it not important? Well, as, as marketers, we hear more and more about social marketing, social media as the years go by. And it's important to note that email is still the lifeblood of our marketing campaigns. 91% uh, of all U.S. consumers check their email daily compared to just 50% for their social media accounts. So that's 
nine out of every 10 consumers is, is looking at that email, yeah. most likely multiple times a day looking for new messages. And then the growth of email accounts is set to outpace social media accounts by a considerable amount over the coming years as well. And these aren't just the number of accounts, these are active accounts. More and more people are setting up and using email accounts daily compared to social media accounts. So, so wait, just stop there for a moment. So are you saying social, so emails are growing faster than social media? Significantly faster. About three times is what we've seen. Okay. And is social media still growing or is it, what is? It's, it's starting to plateau. Okay. And you see Facebook lost users for the first time in its history uh, about a year ago. And there's no plateau with email? No. Email is still growing? No, there is no limit to the growth okay, of email. Okay. So that's, that's really fascinating. Yeah, I it's important to point out that you can't even start a social media account without yes. email. That's actually a really good point. Very good point. And then 82% of all smartphone users have, you know, that email in their pocket that they're yep. checking daily. Yep. Yep. And maybe, uh, you know, honestly, you can think about your own experience. I mean, these are just numbers uh, around consumers, but you're a consumer in many forms and fashions. And so, you know, your own experience with email, uh, you might be able to relate to some of these numbers. So we know that um, people are still using emails, but are emails still valuable in terms of commerce, in terms of transactions? Uh, of course. And it's important to, to point out that customers, consumers actually prefer email to all other channels. Uh, this is our sister, as you mentioned, our, our sister company, Marketing Sherpa, uh, Sherpa, did a recent study, and they found that the vast majority of consumers preferred to be contacted by companies via email, 70%, in fact. And that's that far left bar right there in terms of, and this is, were there parameters around age or any, like, was this? It's actually interesting to point out that this applies to all age ranges, no. even 65 plus, who yeah. you think would be pr preferred to be contacted via telephone, via postal mail, they prefer email as well now. Excellent, excellent. And then, as you'll see here, 81% 80, of U.S. digital shoppers surveyed said that they were at least somewhat more convinced to make an additional purchase based on a targeted email. And we, we know that what people say and what people do are often two very different things. But in this case, it's worth pointing out that this does hold true. 66% of these people actually followed through with the additional purchase yeah. wow. based on that targeted email. Yep, yep. And I know you've kind of, we had a, a many more pages of data. You have one more slide to go through. What are some of the other things you found in terms of the research? Uh, email pays for itself. As far as a marketing channel, it's one of the safest bets you could make. 94% return on investment seen in this marketing SERPA survey for companies who sent over 100,000 emails. Mm -hmm. Those who sent under 100,000 emails actually had an even bigger lift, 139% return on investment. Wow. Wow. And for email is 40 times more effective. Uh, McKinsey and company found for um, lead generation and new client acquisition. And it's also um, customer retention. It's the most, by far, the most effective channel as well, according to HubSpot. And finally, postal mail. You know, a, a lot of people still cling to postal mail, but it's important to point out that email is going to yield a similar response rate, almost identical at one one hundredth, one yeah. one hundredth of the cost. Yeah, fascinating research, uh, and all of it's underscoring the, the the fact that basically email is still important and still vital. It's never been still more having effective, and it's not just still in terms of hanging on for dear life. It's actually growing and growing faster than many of the things that get more attention these days. That's exactly what we found, Austin. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ken. All right, audience. Uh, we just wanted to, to run you through some of the data in case that was a question in your mind. We're talking about email. Uh, we're talking about subject lines, making them uh, more effective. But in the midst of that, I, want you, I wanted you to see, and I wanted you to see some of the research that's indicating, from what we can tell, email is still very much working. Discover what works, email is still working. And so now the question becomes even more intense. All right. If email is this effective, and email is one of the most effective means for communicating with our customer, it's their preferred channel for communication, how can we do it more effectively? What can we learn from these two experiments, from these two winning treatments uh, that we can apply to our own campaigns? In this clinic, what we're going to do is walk through three simple observations. We saw some, some commonalities between the winning tra treatments that we just want to walk you through. And we'll do it quickly, we'll do it swiftly. I'm going to move fast. If at any point you want me to slow down, let me know. Okay? If you want me to go faster, let me know. Optimize me. Okay? Uh, let this be a dialogue, not just a monologue. Okay? And feel free, if you have questions, to ask them. We have a team standing by, reviewing questions, uh, and seeing things come in, uh, and we'll try to get them answered as quickly as possible. Also, after the principles, we're going to try to do some live optimization. All right, observation number one. Looking at these two emails, these two subject lines, here's what we observed, okay? And this, uh, this will probably sound familiar, uh, but what's, you'll see kind of the application of this might be a little bit unique. The winning treatments both, both of the winning subject lines are leveraging words that are specific and tangible. 
And there's a, I, I'm emphasizing the word tangible because that was really interesting about these results. They use those kind of words rather than vague and salesy words. I know some of your comments, uh, I, one in comment in particular said, you know, that, that save 50% sounded kind of, of salesy. So, so look at this one. Look at this subject line. This is from the first experiment. The subject line says, are you a fall foodie? Now, I want to ask you, audience, when it comes to specificity, when it comes to clarity, what words in this subject line are not clear? Which words in this subject line potentially are leaving the customer with questions? Which words are not implying value? Think about it. Look at it. Yes, foodie. Good point, foodie. Now, foodie was a word they wanted to use, but by leading with that word, you are leading with a word that potentially is confusing, not clear. In fact, a lot of you are pointing out the word foodie, particularly if you're trying to connect with someone in terms of relevance, leading with something that they may not know what that word precisely means. It's a vague word. It hasn't been fully defined, and so uh, it, 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 it can be confusing unless you are one. And even if you are one, you may not know that. You may, not, uh, you may like food but not classify yourself as a foodie. Good. There's other things going on this that are kind of vague. Yes, uh, someone said mention spring or summer. Uh, exactly. So, so again, just like you guys were pointing out, are you a fall foodie? That's confusing. Also, what's vague? See what's going on in Boston this November. Both Boston, the word Boston, is a word that represents a lot of things. So it's not totally clear. It's vague. And November. Uh, is, is something that represents something that we're trying to communicate. Again, it's not very vague. It's just a month, okay? So we can bring some clarity. We can bring some value through better words. So here are the words we use. Again, we'll talk about the order of them in a moment, but look at the words used. You got words like clam chowder. You got words like lobster rolls. Now, I don't know about you. Uh, I've been to Boston. And again, this is a... Um, this test has been anonymized. It wasn't the city of Boston we were working with. We were working with a different city that had a different set of food that uh, was related to that city. But when I've gone to Boston, I've had the clam chowder. That, I can almost, even now, I can taste the clam chowder as I'm talking about. I can taste the lobster rolls. And for anyone who has a passion for food, anyone who has a uh, passion for Boston can start to taste that. It's, it's very uh, palpable. It's very tangible. Uh, and that's the kind of words you want to use. Those are the kind of words, uh, particularly for experiences you're trying to uh, sell, those are the words that are really going to have a big impact. And then also we brought clarity. Now we still use the word foodie, but we didn't lead with that. And we connected, instead of saying November, we connected to fall. Now I want you right now to think about the word fall for a moment and its power over the word November. What imagery, what tangible imagery does the word fall draw out of you versus the word November? Think about that. We think about Boston in the fall. What value? You got food, you got clam chowder, and what else do you see? You know, so that, that's the kind of, you, you think of the leaves, you think of the, the colors, you think of the temperature, you think of the smells. All those things are valuable things associated with the fall. And this saw a 10% increase in opens. I'm going to move fast, all right? So here's the other one. I think you guys are getting this point. I want to move to my second point as quickly as possible. <laughs> Ron says, November equates dreary and wet. Okay, for many people it may equate to that. For many others, uh, it drew up this connotation of, of a beautiful fall transformation. So here's the sub second subject line. Again, anonymized with Boston, book now to save 30% on hotel. Now this is interesting. There is some specificity in this subject line. There's some specificity around 30%, but think a little deeply here, okay? What is not being communicated with the 30%? Does 30% matter to you if you don't know what you're getting 30% on? 30% off is a means to an end, just like the word hotel is a means to an end. You, you, you want to go get food. You want to go experience Boston. Uh, that's only valuable. 30% off is only valuable if you can connect it to that experience. A hotel is only valuable if you can connect it to that uh, experience. <laughs> Georgia says, why not go to Boston in December? Uh, funny. So, salesy, 30%. Yes, some of you mentioned that earlier. It's salesy and it's vague, okay? Uh, this subject line is very vague. So, what do we do? We follow the same pattern, okay? This is a pattern that you can follow 
But look at the words we use, holiday shopping, historic tours, pops orchestra, all these are specific things that you would desire 30% off on. And you know what? We haven't even mentioned the 30% off at this point because it's, it's really not at this moment that that's valuable to them. First, we want to get them interested of the value. They're going to click the subject line and they're going to see that there's a 30% off in the actual email itself. Again, it's all about sequence, it's all about timing. It's using the right words to kind of elicit that click. Again, we use specific words and we use words that communicated value. So that's the first thing, 9% opens. Some additional research, I'll go through this fast. Um, you will, everyone on this call will, will receive a recording of this presentation, the slides and everything. So, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm getting some, some signals here from the team. There's a good question that's come in. I'll get to that in just a second, Nat. Uh, but additional research, just want to show you. So uh, again, from our sister company, Marketing Sherpa, we tested 20 different subject lines across 45,000 email sends. I'm just going to go through this fast, but basically the clear subject lines, the specific subject lines, always outperform the clever, the catchy, the intriguing subject line. So with site traffic, with the 200 different subject lines, we saw a 617% increase. Tweets, 315%. Facebook likes, 331%. And I'm not going to read all these, but at the end of the day, the aggregate overall increase was 541% in, uh, in conversion across all channels. Okay, so that's the power of clear and specific words. I wouldn't challenge you right now to go through your subject lines and look and test them. Are your words specific? Are your words clear? Can they be made more tangible? I'm going to skip past this slide. You can get this in the replay, but essentially it's just examples of subject lines that are vague, not clear. Hey, check this out. Hurry my name versus ones that are specific and clear. I think you're getting this point. In a moment, we're going to try to cash it in with some live op, but the, the main point is this. Marketers oftentimes are worrying about trying to create this persuasive copy, copy that's kind of uh, tricky or, or catchy or, 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 or creative, uh, but really we should be just striving for clarity. If you have a genuine value proposition, uh, just being clear is going to uh, persuade your customer. Uh, Dr. McLaughlin, who uh, really started marketing experience in these clinics, uh, is famous for saying clarity trumps persuasion. Uh, clarity trumps persuasion. It's true. And when you have a value proposition, bringing clarity is, uh, is persuasion. That is the most effective persuasion tactic. So take confidence in that, marketers. All right, two more observations, and these I think are, are pretty fascinating. So here's the second observation. Uh, the second observation is that both of the winning treatments leverage a similar sequence of thought. They, they order their, the words. So not only are they using the right words, but they put them in a word order. They put them in order uh, in a similar way. Okay, So that's the first thing we're going to look at in a moment. Observation three was really fascinating to me. As I saw these experiments as we were preparing this web clinic, uh, uh, and Ken was sitting down with me, uh, this observation was something that was, was kind of surprising. Both subject lines don't make the ask explicit. They make it, they imply it. They make it implicit. Okay? So there's not a direct ask in the actual subject line itself. So let me show you what I mean. All right? So we're talking about sequence. All right? So look at this subject line. All right? And I want you to think about this subject line in a couple parts. I want you to think about it in the terms of what the customer gets versus what the customer has to do. Get versus do. Okay? Now, if I were to ask you right now, which, where is the do? Where is this subject line putting the, the thing that the customer must do? I'm waiting for your response to come through. I want you to look at the subject line and ask yourself, where is the, the do? Yes. So I see Scott says book. Do is at the front. Book now. First. First. Yes. Exactly. So everything about the ask, everything about the do is at the very beginning. It's not until you get past the do that you get what you actually get. You get to save up to 30%, okay? And then there's some additional detail about uh, what the savings is for. But at the end of the day, this, this, this sequence didn't work. It got the email deleted. Now look at this new subject line and ask yourself the same question. Where's the do now? Where's the, let me ask you this, where's the get now? Where is the get? Yes, that's right, Greg. It is first. It has been moved up front. In fact, the majority, we were talking about this, where do we stop the get, you know, as we were preparing this web clinic? Almost the entire subject line is everything they get. There's a little bit of additional detail 
you could argue, but the majority of it's get. And what's really fascinating, where's the do? Where's the ask? That's right. Melissa says, or Halessa says, there's no do. That was really fascinating. The ask is completely implicit. This entire email is get, 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 get. You can look at your own subject lines and, and ask yourselves, where's the ask? Where's the get? Where's the do? Uh, and, and see where it is. So this got the 9% the, uh, increase in opens. Now to this subject line, this one's a little bit more tricky, but the same problem is, is happening here. Are you a fall foodie? Believe it or not, that's an ask. You're asking them to consider something. You're asking them to make a decision. Am I a fall foodie? Do I want to open this? Okay, so there's an ask here. It's just front loaded with an ask. And then you have the get, which is see what's going on. Now I, and we can argue, the word see is a tricky word because the word see implies value, but it also implies I have to do something. I have to, I have to see to see. I, I've got to do something to see. And then you get the detail. Again, this, this, uh, sequence did not outperform. Now look what we did here. Again, same structure. Again, powerful words with the tangible, clear words. But look, it's heavy front-loaded with get. Get. All this is get. And then there's some detail. Okay? Where's the ask? The ask here, just like the first subject line, is implied. It is not explicit. It is an implied ask. So it's very fascinating. And I want, so again, look at your own subject lines. Ask yourself, where's the ask? Where's the get? Okay? And let me just say this because we've done some clinics and we've done some really fascinating experiments with headlines and subject lines in the past. And what we've discovered is that the word get, it's so funny, the word get often out, is one of the best performing words. Get this, get that. Uh, and so you, you might find power in the word get, but let me just say this, and I, when I go and I teach on value proposition and, and optimization different places, I make this point, especially when showing some of these headline tests where the word get is constantly outperforming. It's not so much that there's power in the word get. The reason why get works is because there's power in the mindset of get. There, there's a mindset that comes when you, when, you, when you put the word get in your subject line, you're actually forced to think about what you are offering the customer. And when we focus on that, when we have that mindset, our subject lines always outperform, our headlines outperform. It doesn't have to be the word get. It can be any word, but when we lead with and we think about what the customer gets more than what we're thinking about what we want from them, that will, that's, that's human nature across the board. Uh, that's been proven for the past century. When you emphasize what someone else wants, uh, in, your, in your subject line, in your headline, in any of your copy, over what they have to do, that will generate more response. So marketers, if there's one thing you take away from this, think about and think passionately about what you are giving your customer more than how passionate you are about what you get from them. All right, additional research. I'm going to skip past this, but at the end of the day, uh, as, uh, in fact, the question came, I think, uh, a few minutes ago about the length. What's the optimal length of a subject line, okay? So uh, I don't remember who, do you remember who asked that? Oh yeah, yeah, so it was a long time ago. So I do, thank you for your patience for listening. I get that question a lot, all right? So first thing I say is don't be afraid of long subject lines, okay? And, and here's why I can say that, because if you front load your subject line with the value, then they are going to see that value. Uh, and they will determine if they want to read in uh, the remaining subject line, okay? So if you can abide by this rule of focus on the get at the beginning of the uh, subject line, we're not going to have challenges with length, okay? Uh, in fact, I would encourage you to take away a role. You may be wanting me to give you a character length, okay? That's not what I want you to walk away with. Uh, there's some character numbers there on, on the screen, but the most important thing you can get from this clinic is the sequence of your email should be focused on what they get and then what they have to do. We'll send this to you. You'll get some of the research. Here's a couple more examples. Audience, I want you to test to see if you can do this. Now, this, word, this subject line uses the word get, but we're saying not this. Why? What could we do, particularly in a mobile environment, to bring more clarity, more value to this subject line? What could we do? It says get, but let me ask you this. Where is the value in this subject line? That's right, it's at the very end. So what if we move that value to the very beginning, say 50% on your choice? By doing that, we saw a 33% increase in open rate. Here's another one, same thing, buying or ref refinancing. Guys, buying or refinancing, those are almost two of the worst words you could possibly use in a subject line, why? Because it's all due, and it's due with anxiety. So what do you do instead of that? You shift it 
Subject line, own your home sooner. Actually connect to the things that they want, the things that they're getting, not the things that they're going to have to do. I've got to buy or I've got to refinance. No, I get to own my home sooner. Um, and so that's, that's the kind of shift we're talking about here. And when you do that effectively, as you see in this experiment, we saw a 22% increase in open rate. So remember, we're not optimizing subject lines. We are optimizing thought sequences. And the most effective subject lines emphasize the get and imply the ask. Marketers, if you can just get, <laughs> get these two principles and pull up your subject lines right now. Some of you are sending multiple emails a day. If you could just evaluate your subject lines by just these two principles alone, I think you can see some significant results. Okay? Again, you'll get a copy of these slides. We have put together a checklist for you. I'm not going to read it. Uh, we're actually going to leverage this checklist in just a moment. Ben, go ahead and come on up. We're going to leverage this checklist uh, to evaluate some live optimi optimization of emails right now. You can see it on the screen. We will send this to you in a follow-up email, but here's something that you can use to evaluate your emails to so translate cash in those principles into actual things in your email. I have one other thing to say before we get into live op, all right? So uh, if you found this content interesting, again, I, I mentioned it earlier, all this content, uh, the research is powered by Mech Labs. It's coming out of the Mech Labs lab. Uh, and Mech Labs, uh, Market Experience doesn't offer any training, but Mech Labs does. If you'd like to get more training, more information on email messaging, we have a whole uh, class on subject lines, okay? A full, I mean, you think this was full, there's a lot more that we could say. Uh, and so if you're interested in that, and it, we also talk about body copy, we talk about email, ca you know, capturing emails, list size, all that kind of stuff, you can go and check out the email messaging course. There's also a 50% uh, uh, savings there for that course. There's the discount code. I'll leave it on the screen for just another second. And then we're gonna shift swiftly into live optimization. Ben, are you ready? Let's do it. All right, let's do it. Audience, help us out here, okay? I'm pulling up a page right now, okay? This is a live optimization. This is an email. I want you to look at the subject line. Let's just talk about the subject line today, Ben, okay? Let's not even go much further. And I, and I want you to hold off. I know you're, <laughs> you are about to go. <laughs> hold off just a moment. Audience, based on what we just taught you, based on what we just said, how would you improve this subject line? Think about the words used and think about the order. Yes, Dell says do first, get second. Now, you say more specificity. I think that's great, but I want you to tell me, how would you bring more specificity to this? Discover more. Yes, what does that mean? Dot, dot, dot. I think, you, I think that's what you mean, Alicia. So some, some good stuff, Ben. When you see this subject line, what is maybe one or two things that you would do to, to, to optimize this? Yeah, so for one, I, I like how we're bringing the incentive into the subject line, which is yes. the 14-day free trial, right? Um, but what is the real value to the customer? Yes. And in this case, uh, we're, it's Ancestry.com, so it's finding my relatives, finding, about, finding out about my family. And so yes. what is the value of that, and, and can we communicate it effectively in a, in a subject line? Yeah, and so, you know, it's a really interesting point. It's kind of like that save 30% uh, exactly. on hotels. It's like, I, it's a 14-day 14, 14 free trial, and I don't really care. Like, no one woke up in the morning and said, by golly, I just want to join. I want to do a 14-day <laughs> free trial today. So Some you, people do. Yeah, <laughs> you might, Ben, yeah. No, but what, <laughs> what I'm saying is, can you connect to the tangible value associated with that? First, the word start implies action. i got to do something. Absolutely, okay? Yeah. And I have no justification whatsoever yeah. for doing that. So if you want to optimize the subject line, ask yourself, what do they get? Right. What Absolutely. Do they get? So Something along the lines, maybe discover your family. So I don't we have the word discover in there, discover your family, um, yes. things like that. But I, I do like how we're connecting the subject line down to the body of the email. If you see the call to actions yes. are very much the same. Oh, perfect. I do, ve I do like that very much. There's great continuity there. But again, what is the real value to yeah. the customer? I, and I think you hit it, Ben. The word discover is probably the most powerful word. So yeah. leading with that word and actually getting tangible about what they discover. Absolutely. Good. Good. So I'm going to do one more. I'm being flagged by everyone around me that we are out of time. I realize we're out of time, but I, I just want to get you guys as much value as possible. So if you need to go, you can go. But uh, if you want to stay, you can stay. Uh, we're going to do one more. Okay. So Ben. Absolutely. <laughs> honestly, this may be. Um, this is really good. So Ben, what do you think about the subject line? So have you taken our survey yet? So I, again, I don't know how yeah. many people wake up in the morning and want to take a survey. So. This is all ask. Yes. Let's add some value in there. Why in uh, the world <laughs> would I take a survey? Exactly. So 
that is what we have to put in the subject line. Yeah. What is the reason that I would want to take the well, survey? I want to ask you, Ben, why would you take a survey? Well, to get maybe information. Maybe yes. I get something free in return. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I even yeah. get paid for it. So why would, yeah, so, and I think that's exactly why I wanted to ask you that. Because what do they get in return for taking the survey? Do they get Absolutely. an incentive? Do they get to contribute to some sort of research? Because I know right now, I'm deleting that email. Oh, yeah. There's no re I mean, I, I don't want to take a survey. So, yeah, and one thing that, that I think a lot of marketers forget is when we send out emails, we don't only compete against our competitors. We yes. compete against everything else that's in our inbox. And so if I am sending this out during the week and I'm at work, I don't think I'm going to take a survey. Yep. So what is the benefit to me and what is the opportunity cost of me taking the time out of my busy schedule? Yes to act upon yes. uh, whatever the ask is. Yes, yes, and, and audience, I, you know, just, I'm, I'm actually really kind of enjoying this, so uh, audience, I lied. I want to do one more with Ben. This is, this <laughs> is just too much fun. So Ben, can you handle one more? Uh, yeah. All right, so one more okay. here. Get, oh, I'm so glad we Are did we, this one, yes. Actually, we can just, we can just stop now. <laughs> this is, <laughs> this it, is it doesn't get much better than this. It uses the word get, <laughs> you know, so. It get, not only get, but get money. Yeah, so there's value there. Get the money you Today. need. Today. Today, urgency right there. So, so Ben, all right. So, uh, actually, audience, this is a tricky one, okay? So, uses the word get. It has something that's valuable as money. So, again, thinking about what we taught you today, what would you do to improve this subject line? So, no, none of you. Hold on, hold on. Audience, what, look at this. Yep. Alicia hit it right on the head. Not specific. What can I use the money for? That's what yeah. Dale says. Fund your next project is an example go. from Adam. Good stuff. So, what were you going to say? Actually, they're right. They, they hit. They hit the nail on the head. My assumption would be with a subject line like this, your open rates are probably still very, very good. Yes. But once you get to the body of the email, you might be losing people. And so, being being more specific, tying it back to the call to action in the email, which in this case is actually getting a loan and getting funding. Yes. Uh, might be a lot more effective than yeah. the subject line. Yeah. This have screams to. spam to me. Yeah. This screams salesy. Absolutely. So if you can bring some tangibility to why you would even want, like it's a particular unique meaning behind the money that they're getting. Yes. So, good stuff. Uh, audience, thank you for your time. I'm going to go ahead and jump to the final. Actually, you know what? I got one more thing to show you. Jump to slide 46. <laughs> you guys are getting bonus material today, okay? I hope you're enjoying it, all right? Free of charge. All right, so here's an experiment right now, okay? Uh, and I want to get you to vote on this, all right? So it's a national bank, a bank that everyone would recognize. We've anonymized it heavily to protect the innocent. Uh, here's the national bank. Here's, I just want to show you something, okay? So here's the process they took to get into it. I'm going to get, mm -hmm. uh, you may actually know the results, so I'm not going to get you to vote. Uh, but look at this. Open a minute, say click that. Here's the original, okay, the control. The original page asks them for more information, okay? So they, they get information about them and they drive them to a page that looks like this that actually takes an algorithm, takes their information and creates some options for them, okay? That was the control. Uh, and so we wanted to test this page with two treatments, all right? I'm gonna show you those treatments right now. Here's treatment one. What we did is we took out that whole step of asking them for information and doing the uh, kind of the customization for them, we let them customize themselves. So we gave them three options, and then we, you know, that was the page. They could do a checking, they can do student checking, or they can do check checking with savings. That was treatment one. Treatment two was we actually just eliminated the options and just drove them through one one thing basically. All right, and we would figure out the options after the fact. Okay, so those are the three uh, treatments or the two treatments side by side. I'm gonna tell you right now, audience, the control did not win. So one of these <laughs> treatments outperformed the control. And I want you to tell me right now, which of these things, do, based on what we talked about today and based on what, you know, from your previous web clinics, which of these do you think generated the most response? Good, I see votes coming in right now. You're still with us. Ron says two. Dustin says one. Dale, you say one? Uh, we got Hillel, she says two, 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 one, two, two. Uh, one says cleaner. Yeah, Two, 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 good, good. So it's actually almost an even split. And so uh, good guessing. This is how it often goes in marketing departments. And if you want to know the results, this is a hook, and I do apologize to you uh, right now, but if you want to see the results, you're going to have to come back to our next clinic next month, and we're going to be talking about this test with some other tests, uh, talking about motivation, okay? It's our next 35-minute web clinic. Uh, again, uh, thank you for your time. You can sign up right there, marketingexperience.com slash motivation. Motivation is the most influential element when it comes to making people convert on your pages. If you don't know how to leverage it, you're probably missing out a lot of revenue. You're missing on a lot of revenue, you're missing a lot of customers. And so you wanna attend that clinic. All right, I am, seriously, uh, officially, 
finished, okay? You can go, all right? But thank you for your time. If you, if you had a good time on this call, if you valued the material, please let us know. Let us know uh, what kind of things you'd like to see from us in the future, what kind of testing you'd like to do. And then as the slide says on the screen right now, there will be a pop-up survey. Uh, I read every single line item of feedback, so I would love to hear from you. I'd love to hear your feedback. Tell us what you like. Tell us what we could do better. And then if you're interested in running tests like this with your own products, with your own campaigns, check that little box that says Research Partnership. We're always looking for hungry organizations that are just as desirous to learn what works as we are. Again, thank you for your time, and we'll see you back here in a month.